What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode. Today I'm back at one of my go-to reservoirs. Got a bit of a walk to get where I want to go, but haven't been on this side of the lake in a while, so I wanted to give it a try again. I usually have better luck fly fishing over here, so I'm hoping I can get into some fish on the fly. But see how it goes. Might have to just resort to the lure because they can be pretty picky here. But yeah, there's, there's some big cutthroats in here, and that's what we're after. And we'll see if we can get into some. I'm just gonna take my long walk all the way around the lake and I'll see you guys there. Yeah, it's nice coming here in the fall because usually this whole area is just super tall grass but it's all dead now so much easier to walk through. I'm hoping since the water's a lot colder that these fish will be a bit closer to shore because in the summer they just go way out deep and they just hold there. There's two massive cutthroats just patrolling right there. Holy, those are some big fish. Wow, okay. This is this is where I'm gonna stop. Oh my god, I can just I can see the colors on them too. They look so bright red. That's awesome. Alright, let's get a fly on. Let's see if we can get some of these. This tip make it a lot easier to put your fly poles together they're so long it's it's hard to work from the bottom up so it's better to work backwards you start from the tip of the rod and then you just put it together all the way to the bottom like this another tip is you loop your line like this when you're putting it through your eyelets that way if you drop it, it doesn't fall all the way back through. I'm just gonna go ahead and start out with this black woolly bugger. Imitate a leech, something that they seem to like here. I'm not seeing those fish anymore, but I'm sure they'll be back eventually. If not, I'll just have to cruise the shoreline a bit more. Look. All right. Got it all tied up, let's, let's get casting out there, see if we can find those fish. Can't see those fish out there anymore, so I'm gonna throw in an indicator. Just try to get a little bit farther out there and just let it sit out there. See if anything comes by and snags it. Alright, those fish have disappeared, so I'm just gonna go ahead and mock the shoreline. See if I can find some cruising around again. straight towards me. That's lovely. So I'm not completely giving up on the flies, but I just can't believe I saw those two big trout feeding right next to shore right as I got here. 
and now it's just been dead. It's nothing, so I'm just gonna throw on a Jake and toss it out there, see if I can entice anything with it. Big old bite. There we go. Just a little guy, looks like a stalker. So definitely not the ones that we saw, but, but it's fish, so we'll take it. The catcher and release only lake, by the way, so won't be keeping anything. I know one of those bites was definitely no small fish, so. Let's try to get a bigger one. It's quite a bit deeper right over here, so we'll try to cast it out across here. A little bit better than the last one. Got some teeth on them. Nice. I'm just gonna go ahead and cast my fly line out there. Just leave it, just let it sit. Chances are I miss a hook set if something takes it, but you know, I just I like to know if it's worth trying again. <laughs> Probably native. Doesn't look like a stalker, but sure is small. So this is a catch and release lake. I like to talk a bit about uh, just best ways to uh, catch and release trout. They're not they're not like a warm water fish like a bass. You can't really handle them too roughly. They're pretty fragile fish. So best to have one of these rubber nets, not a fabric one, that'll mess up their slime coat which they need to survive and to <laughs> prevent diseases and things like that. And also it's important to not play the fish too much. I know it's fun and like being able to just loosen your drag and let the fish take its runs, but but if there's not really a chance of the fish breaking your line, then I just like to get the fish in as fast as possible. Um, it's always smart to use barbless hooks so you can get the hook out a lot easier. And yeah, and it's also really important to wet your hands before you handle the fish. That way your hands don't wipe off the slime coat as well.
always best to give them the best chance of survival. And they give you a good bit of fun, so return the favor, respect them. But yeah, just just some tips for some people who may not know. Try to keep the sport as respectful as possible. But yeah, let's let's get back to fishing. Let's get some more. Like he's been caught before. Guys, all messed up. I don't think that was from us. Okay. Pretty good looking cutty. There he goes. Well, guys, my GoPro is on its last leg. Fortunately, I was not able to get anything on a fly today. It's just, I think I might have missed the cutoff. Yeah, right as, I, right as I got here, I saw some cruising by the shore, but after that, there's not much else. But yeah, got, got some good ones on the lure. But no, no monsters. I'm gonna Get back out here a little earlier next time. Try my luck on the flies some more. Hopefully we can, we can get one of the big ones. So yeah, stay tuned for part two. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's a great day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.